What's going on, everybody? We are back with another episode, and oh my God, we're ending January out, y'all. This is it. This is it. We're we're ending out, and I'm really, really excited about the ending and all that this month has brought. And so I'm really excited about today because we got some great conversation going on today. Um, we have a returning guest. I cannot wait for you guys to meet him. Um, but we have a returning guest, so you know, yes, we are back. All right, so uh, again, sorry, let me do my introduction correctly. Hello, everyone, how are you doing? It is your host, Jatoria Christian of the I Am Jatoria brand, and so I am back here with you today, having the greatest time. Um, and so again, I'm really excited about the things that we're about to get into today. We're going to get into the upcoming events we have for the I Am um, Shatoria brand with the I Am Forgiveness Retreat, the workshops. So we're going to get into that. Um, I got the question of the week. Um, we're going to get into that. Um, and then I have like a little tribute. It's going to be talking really short um, as yesterday was the 10th anniversary. So if you heard uh, heard the podcast from the first week, I celebrated my mom's birthday. But we're going to close the month out by me celebrating my mom. And um, I think that, and then we're going to, you know, introduce our guests. But in the meantime, as we get ready for that, um, we're going to go ahead and, you know, Get ready with our show. Again, you know who it is. Let's do this. All right, all right. So we are here today. And again, it is your host, Shatoria Christian. I am here. And I'm really excited about what today is going to bring with um, conversation. So um, definitely looking forward to it. So for one of the first things I want to talk about is, you know, we got a lot of events coming up and I'm really excited about what 2023 is holding. Uh, one of the biggest things, if you have not got your book, um, the magazine is out. I'm telling you, don't be waiting. Go to the IamTutoria.com merch. Um, I'm telling you now, this, uh, this, oh, y'all, what is in this magazine? So, yes, I have a tribute to my mom. I have my top 20 books, music, podcasts, and other things, um, other exciting news in it. And then, you know, getting ready for the next, um, issue which will come out in may so i'm telling you if you do not do not do not have your magazine get your magazine it is the um it's a good edition like i'm really excited about this edition and what it brings so i mean y'all just need to go and get go on and get it and stop playing all right um but next on the agenda is we do have a lot of events coming up so if you are reading the magazines you do see the events coming up um, and I'm really, really excited about that. So we have, um, our first workshop of the, uh, of the year. So we'll be having a workshop every quarter. So March, June, yeah, March, June, September, December. Okay. So I'm in my head, y'all March, June, September, December. Okay. So this year we will be having, um, Y'all heard her speak, uh, Miss Le Tonye, uh Moreau Naylor. She will be the speaker for our first workshop, and I'm really excited about that. We're talking about faith and family, and so that workshop is held on uh, March 23rd. Oh, there it is. Okay, so yeah, March 23rd, and it is for five dollars. You can get your tickets at the IamShatoria.com. Slash I am event. So get your ticket. Uh, I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Get your ticket. And um, can't wait to see you online as we have um, this discussion about faith and family and what it is. So just an hour out of your time. And so I'm really, really excited about that. All right. And so with that event, we do have um, the Forgiveness of Freedom Retreat coming up in October. So here's the thing. So I had a lot of people ask the question. Um, so yeah, there is a I Am Forgiveness the Retreat, October 13th to the 15th. Here in San Antonio, we have added more VIP tickets. Yes, we added some more because we ran out. 
And people were like, wait, I want to be there. Like, y'all, y'all got to be there. And be on the lookout for on the website. We will be announcing our speakers, our host, um, the events. So, so far, the events that we do have coming up is pretty, pretty dope. Um, we have, uh, from the 13th to the 15th, we got that Sunday, we have our worship brunch. Uh, with one of my really, really good friends, um, Wilfred Barnes the second, who will be speaking that Sunday night. We have our meet and greet. Uh, Monday, the retreat is going on where we're all in one space. And um, really excited about that. And, you know, my keynote speaker, I've already announced, but we're really going to put the announcements out there, Daisha Jones. Um, and then we have... Uh, Tuesday, where we go into our breakout sessions, where men is in one session, women's in one session. So you can get your tickets at imshatori.com slash I am events, where you can get your tickets. And I'm telling you, they are going. You can also book your hotel. We are thankful for the Courtyard Marriott of um, uh, Westover at SeaWorld. Uh, we sit, we're going to be sitting right in front of SeaWorld, too. So that's a, that's a blessing within itself. So I'm like, mm, pretty, pretty excited about that. Okay. Um, really, really excited. So we do have a lot of events coming up and um, looking at my board now. Yeah, we have a lot of events coming up, y'all. And, um, you know, great announcements coming up. So stay on top of all of my social media. Um, you're able to catch that information. OK. Uh, and then also, you know, so we're going to kick into question of the week. I think this is important to talk about question of the week, you know, question of the week. Um as we're ending January. So, you know, the question of the week is, have you accomplished your uh, your January goal? Have you accomplished um, your January goal? That's the question. Yep, that is the question. Have you met your goal that you had for 2023? That's very important, okay? So for me, um, I've been holding myself accountable with stepping out on faith on some things. So, I am sitting back and waiting for these things to uh, act. Um, I've done my part in reaching out to those goals. So like um, when I look at my board, um, vision board, uh, vision book board um, event happened this past weekend. Really, really excited what people are doing. Um, that was a really great event. So I'm really excited about that. And then I got to speak at Dream Week, which was absolutely dope. Love it, love it, love it. Um, yeah. And I did again the magazine coming out on the 16th. So I'm really, really excited um, about what is what is happening, man. Like it's great. So I've met some goals. Um, I'm still working on some things, but now I gotta make some goals for February. Um YouTube, like I'm, I'm literally working on that right now. So like, you know, the Bible, Habakkuk 2-2. Um, I want to make sure I get that right too. Habakkuk 2-2 talks about uh, writing it down and making it plain. And so the thing is about it is sometimes you just got to write it and just, just stand on it. And so that's what I do. I just write and I just stand on it. So I'm really, um, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm reaching these goals. So I hope you are too as well. So I just, and if you want to share, please do hit our social media up. Um, IG at I am underscore Shatoria. And hit us up as there's just a lot going on, but I want to know, and you'll see this question for the week again. So I want to know, did you meet your uh, goal this week? Okay. So awesome. Now, as we, um, Get ready to prep for our visitor. I'm really excited about this just guest today. Uh, and um, I think he's really, really dope. He is a returning. He's one of my very, very good friends. And I have to get into in a minute, you know, how me and him really got to where we were at. But he is back. Um, you guys saw him at season three. Um, Joshua Bailey, a.k.a. JB Writer um, out of Georgia. So, uh, yeah, I cannot wait to introduce him again. That's my homie right there. But uh, before that, I have to give love, give grace to um, yesterday May the 10th anniversary of my mother's passing. And, you know, it's um, I am like really OK. Like I'm really am. I'm really OK. 
And so I'm very glad that I've been able to accomplish a lot um, and not let her death be in vain. So I'm really excited about that. So definitely to my mom, who I uh, forever will make sure she knows her name reigns. Um, you know, yeah. So to Beverly in North, January the 5th, 1961, you see it on the screen. To January 29th, 2014, it's been 10 years. And, you know, I, I still can't believe it's been 10 years. Um, it's, it's a wild moment at some point. You'd be like, ooh. And so hers is 10 years. And then this come May, which I will pay my heart to, um, to my grandmother who is hitting seven years this year. And this is crazy. Oh, wow. And so, um, you know, they died three years apart, but it is amazing to know the, yeah. Mm. So yeah, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, seven years. Wow. Um, wow. That just caught me off guard, everybody. But yeah. So to seven years um, and her birthday is in May. So I will be paying her homage, uh, honoring her in um, in the next issue, in the, the May issue, as, as it is also Mother's Day. So um, I can't wait to like actually put it out there too. So if you have like a dedication you want to give to a mom, and I'm gonna have it on my social media too, like start sending it in, like for real, let's do the dedication to the moms and to the dads because the next issue will cover May, June, July, and August. So yeah, get yourself ready. All right. So again, to my mom who I, you know, I love the most. And so one of the things that I stand on is about forgiveness and freedom. You know, I talk about that all the time. Forgiveness and freedom is very, very important. And so one of the things that I said in my if you have read the new issue that came out, the dedication to my mom, I did an open letter. And in it, I said, well, a piece of it. Surprisingly, your passing became the key to unlocking my healing. Some may not grasp this concept, but your absence granted me the ability to heal in ways that were hindered by your presence. Let me tell you, healing is absolutely very important. And healing is absolutely is essential to our livelihood. Um, my mother's passing was one of the hardest things I really had to deal with um, at the age of 31 and being pregnant with my daughter. And remind you, so, and before that, that's a, a big story that comes before that, which is also in my book, Authentic Transparency, Forgiveness to Freedom. And I talked about the journey of getting pregnant, my mother being by my side, despite the fact our relationship prior and so one of the things I will say that's in the book that I, I so adore is um, God allowed me to have my mom for nine months. And so that stands for me because, you know, women were pregnant for nine or 10 months and I got to have my mom for, you know, about 40 weeks. And I say that because from the time that men heard talk about our forgiveness to the time that she passed, it was about 40 weeks. And so to know I had my mother um, for nine months as if she is carrying, she was carrying me um, through some difficult times, that means a lot. And so that may not resonate with a lot of people, but I, look, if it's one, it's one. Because it really still resonates with me that she carried me for, you know, months in her womb. I'm a late baby. So um, I was supposed to, I was doing October. I came November 3rd. So um, but for her to carry me again, um, spiritually and mentally, uh, yeah, that, that took something for me. And so as I honor her death, I honor her life and I, I am thankful for her and being the mom that she was. And I still honor even through the pain of all our issues that we have, that we had that it was the moment that we told each other we were sorry and it just it made such a difference um i felt the weight fall like chains falling y'all um and so that's a whole nother story by itself that um you have to read the book if you have not and uh yeah so to my mother again um i am 
forever grateful for you. So to Beverly Ann North, I miss you much. And I'm so glad I was able to honor you um, in a magazine. So uh, I praise God that uh, she sees this honor and that she is smiling. Okay. All righty. Now we'll, you know, get back to other stuff. All right. So thank you guys for, you know, being here and rocking with me this month as we are back in season five. And so again, I'm bringing back a really, really, really good friend of mine who was in season three. Um, he did a couple of episodes, one by himself and then one with a crew of my homies. And so he is coming back, y'all. And so I am super excited to see him back. Uh, by the name of Joshua Bailey, a.k.a. J.B. Ryder. So after this, be prepared to have him come in and I'm going to introduce him and let y'all know the story of how we really, really connected. All right. All right. See you guys in 30 seconds. Authentic transparency, forgiveness to freedom. Come and read a story about my faith. Learn all about my forgiveness and forgiving of others. How I embrace the freedom that I currently have. You can get authentic transparency, forgiveness to freedom at Amazon and I am Shatoria.com. All righty, all righty. As we are sitting here, I'm super, super excited about uh, what is about to uh, happen next with my homie, homie, homie. So, um, Get ready, sit back. We're gonna have some laughs today. So I hope you guys are ready for some laughs. Um, because he is cuckoo for cocoa puss on a good day, but he is absolutely so great. So I'm really excited about having him on. So I need you guys to go ahead and you know say hello to my homie. All right, we are back. So I hope y'all ready because I'm about to bring my homie on. And this is about to be a candid conversation. There's no topic. We just going to catch up. Um, he is my homie, homie, homie. We literally, um, it's crazy how our stories collided and how we was in the same places and didn't know we was in the same places. But you guys have seen him before in season three as he talked about his writings and his life. Um, and if you came to my book lunch, he was the, he was the speaker at the book lunch. He is, uh, I don't, I don't know, poet, but he's a writer. So, uh, I want you guys to give it up for my homie JB. What's yeah, up? Yeah, what's happening, man? What's good? Glad, glad to have you back. Hey, hold on. Now we got to make a correction to that, that, that intro. I'm a, I'm a creator. Oh, okay. I'm my bad. Creator. My bad. Okay. I okay. Do, my mind is able to do whatever it wants to do and it can imagine. Oh my God. I'm not about to play with you today. I see where we about to go. So here's the thing. These are two retired. So for people to know, we are both retired military now. We are both yep. living our best life. Um, like it's crazy. So you retired a month before I did. Well, September 1st? This is the yeah, October, I, October 1st. Okay. Let me let me articulate a little bit better. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they know it from the country, right? The viewers know. <laughs> okay, before you go, before you go there, all right. So the crazy thing about me and JB is me and JB didn't officially meet until DC time frame. Yep. However, though, come to find out, we're like, what, 20 miles is that from where we lived? Yeah. The um, and then you, I graduated 01, you graduated 02. 03, 03, 03. Excuse me, two years behind me. Yeah, um, and, um, then we wound up was at the we was at Tinker together and then even yeah, couldn't even remember yep. until we started talking in DC. It was like, wait a minute, yeah, hold yeah. on. And yeah. we just linked up and been like extra cool since then. Um yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's but crazy yeah. how we are both, yes, we are country kids, we are we are country children. Um, I laughed because at one point when we did talk about retirement, we both was like, Ooh, we should go back to our hometown to have our retirement ceremony. Neither one of us did that. <laughs> Not official. I did a family and friends gathering. 
But no, yeah, I had a big blast that you missed. Where in, in Texas? Yes. Oh See, yeah, man. You'll you be checking messages. No, 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 messages. no, 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 no. Let me tell the you. headlight went out. We had like 250 people. It was on Facebook. I had it live on Facebook too. No, I went to. Where was it? Um, it was July 14. As a matter of fact, you told me or uh, you wasn't gonna be able to make it for whatever reason. Yeah, yeah, I had I had a, a prior event that I had uh, mm -hmm. around that time. I just can't remember, but yeah, hey, he man. Is. You know, yeah, you know, you, yeah, I mean, like this. but we had a great time. That's what's up, though. That's it took up. us like three weeks to recover. I'm still recovering from my September trip. I took out the country. I saw that you um you definitely so that's actually a question I have for you. So I saw that. So one of my first questions I have for you for real though is how are you feeling about being retired? Like that's like the number one question right now. What's what's look the deal? You, well, hey, look, you got the prompts popping up and everything. I like that. You 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 <laughs> official, but hey. Oh, I moved I moved up to so to everybody that is uh y'all how know how we get down as we if you are listening if you listened to before um or if you watch this on youtube before you know i didn't have all of this and you so I learned you know, I grew. You know, came up in the world man <laughs> that's what I, that's what i like though oh no let me answer this question though uh, honestly say um at first it was i was just ready to get out right like you do something for 20 years you need to change i was pressed to get out. i ain't gonna miss this stuff i'm cool now i don't miss it but um the appreciation that I had, that I now have for what I did is more prevalent. Like, it's like, well, you served 20 years. You did something that a lot of people can't do. And guess what? You're 38 and you're done. Yeah. And so that doesn't set in until you actually retire. And so, um, you know, during my past three or four months, I've been out going places, uh, running to people. You want to hang out? I got to go to work. And I'm just like, Oh yeah, I forgot. Like you know what I'm saying. Like <laughs> it, it's, it's an innocent thought, but it's a great feeling, man, to be 38 and retired, and it's, it's just not sitting in like after the fact. Because all, like I said in the beginning, you're just ready to move on and get out. But mm -hmm. I position myself to be in a great place, man, and here I am. So I appreciate you for inviting me again on the show. So I forgot to get it out of the way in the beginning. Absolutely. So you know, here's the thing about retirement. Let me tell you. Um, you did 20 i did 21 on the dot i when i said 21 on the dot it was there's no zero there's no months there's no days zero 21 on the dot but i i laugh about it because so let me <laughs> this is crazy all right so you know you we have the skill bridge so technically i ain't worked military work since february of 2023 Three. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah i've been teaching this whole time and so I made an appointment to go get my new ID card October the 18th. My retirement date is one October. So I'm like, I'm good because it's not going to shift because being a personnelist, you don't just leave the system. You got to go in and got to manually change all this other stuff. Right, right. And it was that Saturday. Uh, I think it was like the 14th or 15th or something like that. And I remember going through the gate and the chick literally was like, yeah, I can't let you on base and you can't get your ID card back. And I was like, what? I gotta go to the grocery store. I have an appointment on Wednesday. My stuff don't expire to October 18th. And she was like, and it literally hit me that I was retired and that I hadn't dealt with the fact that the change had happened. Because when she said, well, you separated. No, I didn't. You had to read yeah, it right. out. Right. That's the start. I did not separate. I retired. I'm a retiree. What you talking about, girl? You better get it right. You know what I'm I had about? a whole attitude. She was like, no. You separated. Ma'am, who are you talking to? You better put some respect on that master sergeant. You ain't lying. You better say, hey, look, yo, you know, it's funny because my sim my situation, I had all the plan it out, right? I knew they were going to take your ID card. But I don't want to get into why I still got mine. We'll keep that uh, offline. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's just say the day I went to the gate, I didn't have it. I don't know where it was. Maybe I had lost it, but I think I found it somewhere. Long story short. I went to the gate with my 214 and said, look, bro, I'm retired. I'm going to God doing. I got an appointment slip right here. I'm going to MPF to get my ID card. No problem. But then this was an army base. Oh. I was I went to my sister station in Augusta. Shout out to my sister Lacey. She in Augusta. And uh, what's the base in Augusta? Fort Gordon, I think. Uh Stewart. Yeah, what, no, yeah, what up? Gordon. Yeah, whichever one there. I went there with my, my 214. I said, bro, look, 
I'm I'm the old retiree. I don't know what's going on. I need, I need to get my ID card. That brother, he just let me on the base. All right, so um, yeah, man, I didn't have that experience. That's unfortunate for you, but <laughs> I, I still cried. got my white cat though. I found. Oh, shut up. Cause I was mad, y'all. I wanted to keep my I wanted to keep my cat and put a hole in it because for me it's like this the la- this is it mm-hmm. right here. And plus it was a cute picture too. That just oh, Lord, <laughs> but still. Yeah. I was in my feelings and they took away my ID card and I cried like a baby. But here's why I cried though. I cried because I hadn't dealt with the fact that I was done. Oh, see, I was done like six years ago. <laughs> Mentally, I had checked okay, but, out. Okay. Mentally, absolutely. But here's the thing, just like you said, it. I won't do this again. I, we're cool. Because I don't miss the PT. I don't miss the evals. I don't, I'm cool. I don't, I don't miss yeah. none of that. Good. But yeah. I do miss the fact of meeting the new airmen and hanging out, meeting the new people, being part of an organization You know that is so big. Don't get me wrong. We have the negativity in the military. However, yeah. I would say some of the greatest things has come out of being in the military. You know what I'm saying? And meeting the people, like it's crazy how the military is so big but we really small because yeah. me you know the same people same folks. like we got the same crew and you know dre been here yay uh <laughs> so you have your reasons to come back to san antonio but okay. it's literally like the the family that you make in the military hands down is one of the dopest like you we can't beat that no. um you know we, we can't beat that at all so um, I, I had to get the little military part in there because, like I said, I was in my feelings. Nah, man, it's, it's been a cool journey. I, I really did appreciate my time. It, it goes by fast. You know, people always say that mm-hmm. as an airman, it will go by. Excuse me, it'll go by fast, but it, it really does. And um, I don't regret not one ounce of it. I'm glad I did it. Um, and like you said, the friends and the people you meet, man, bro, like, like all my friends. I don't. I don't I'm a. You know me. I don't make new friends. So, so once you become my friend, you, you my down, friend. man. I not not no friends, and then I became one of your new homies. But you don't and count because you was already part of like like I sort of kind of knew you, but didn't really know you. you know that's the like, sad part. Like, how many of us is in and then be connecting with other people, and and I think that's the dopest part because we have the same crew. And that's we still the crazy we know part. folks from our whole town. Like we still know folks from Putnam and Green County. Like we know we folks. Like you know what I'm saying. So. Oh, uh, like when you, laugh, when just, people be like, oh, you know, Jay, you know, Joshua, this is how you know they don't know you because they be like, you know, Joshua, yep. I do, I do yep. know Joshua. And I know his name, I'll call him whatever you want to, yeah, y'all, they hit the whole night, yeah, man. So, like, but nah, man, just, just to wrap that question up, I really do, I'm enjoying my retirement. If for me at this point, Shatori, it's all about doing what I want to do in life because for 20 years, I did what somebody else told me to do, and so just like you. You chasing your passion, whether that's teaching people, helping kids, and doing your your entrepreneurship. I'm in the same boat. And I'm pretty sure you got some questions lined up for that too, but I'll I'll let you lead the floor on that. I do. So, you know, here's the biggest thing, you know, how we really, really got connected was your writing. And so um, you've always been very open about your writings and um, what that entails for you. And so what has inspired you to become a writer and how has the inspiration evolved over time? Like from the time you start to where you at right now. Right. Um, so like, yeah, I, I realized this in 2020 when it came to me, like, I feel like God or the creator or whatever we believe in, we're all gifted in ways. Right. And, um, writing or words or whatever you want to call it has been my gift since I've been born. But you don't, you don't, you don't know that you're you're a gifted person when you when you're when you're a gifted person, right? We all have our creativity spots, our gifts, but you kind of go through life just being normal. Mm. And it wasn't until my my gift, my words, my poetry start touching certain people, right? Right. Um, like I said, this all happened in twenty, and then I kind of re I replayed back my entire life and realized that I was always good with words. Mm. So honestly, when you say what inspired me. I will say, um, just looking back, looking back on what I had already done for certain for certain people and some of my, how my words had already touched certain people and being like, damn, bro, like, this is really your gift. So I just continued to build off the momentum that I created. And um, and that's where I'm at to this day. 
I think that was a two part question. What was the second part of it, if you don't mind? Um, let's see. And how did that information evolve? Um, you know what? That's a that's a that's a that's a great second part of that question because on my retirement trip, I went to Colombia and I visited a small African town in Colombia called Palenka. Okay. And, that's, and I'm not sure if you have seen any of my photos I posted on that. Oh, trip. I did. I, I saw you on the crew out there. I was confused, but okay, keep going. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. So we were actually in a small town. Shout out to Colombia. We was actually in a small town called Palenka, right? And it's mm -hmm. where there's a lot of great history in that in that town. But um, what I realize now is that it's about the humanitarian aspect of life for me. Oh, using my creativity to offer people new perspective, offer people different views on life and create positive change. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I do it now for. It's not It's not so much about recreating new right, new material to put out there. It's really about the people, touching people being like, oh man, I never thought about that. Thank you for that jewel. You know what I'm saying? And so that's what I do now. I'm more big on the humanitarian aspect of my gift rather than focusing on the gift itself because it's all the gift is already there right it's already proven that i can write or, or i have a way with words and so it's more so about how can i share this gift with the world and give back and that's where i'm at now so with going off of that question and what you just said um what is your plans to use that new um that new finding like I mean, that's so, you know, with humanitarian, I, I had opportunity to go to um, Malawi, the long way mm -hmm. in Africa, beautiful country, very poor. Um, but it, like you said, it taught me the understanding of how we in America, how we, how we operate, how we look at stuff. We are very different. And so when you go into a town that has no electricity outside of this hotel, or you go into a town that literally has no street lights. Right. Stop sign or street light. So when we had to do the directions, it was go straight until you see the hood. The hood is blue, right. like this dark blue. Make a left and do know you're going to hit a huge pot just in case it's raining. Like it, yeah. it's one of those things. So what is your plan to utilize what you saw and how you plan on top, trying to incorporate it to your writing? Um, so, you know, I'm a, oh, I, I don't call myself a motivational speaker, but um. <laughs> You will speak. Uh, it's it, it's in me, right? It, it's in me. I know I have that gift, but realistically, um, I talk about humanitarian and people, but it's really about the mental aspect, right? So I'm also decent with resolution conflict, right? I'm 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 I'm, I'm good with behavior change, and so recognizing my gift again, I went out and got certified to become a behavior change specialist. Okay. And so to answer your question. Again, using my knowledge, my gift to help people change behavior to positive things, right? It's all about touching individuals. And so I can change the world one person at a time. Because what I tell you, you may be like, man, look, I had a conversation with my homeboy, JB. He told me this, boom, boom, boom. It, it changed my life. You tell that to your homeboy, your homeboy tell it to your homeboy, and so forth and so on, right? You plant one seed and they continue to grow. And so, like, now I really want to branch off. And with my Unity for Life Enterprise uh, 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 company, I want to have an umbrella of behavior change that I want to that I want to manage. And so that's going to be putting myself out there. Hey, if you have an issue that you need help getting over, I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to say I'm a therapist or psychologist, psychiatrist. But hey, I'm certified in specific behaviors, right? Like let's just say I have a problem. I just can't get out of bed in the morning. And go to the gym. I, I want to work out so bad. It's killing me, bro. I really do want to do it. I got the weights and everything. I just can't get out of that bed. That's what I'm here for. That one behavior change that you can't fix, that's what I'm here for. And so, again, like using not so much the writing, the gift of writing, but my ability to help people. Because that's what my words were able to do, help people. And so um, I'm, I'm incorporating new things into the umbrella of the Innocent for Life, which will be behavior change in the future to help people, man. Like, that's what I'm doing going forward to help the bigger brand of humanity. You know, like I'm a human. Now I, I don't. I'm retired. I do get a pension, and I, I, I do want to <laughs> people free. But at some point, you know, you know, you got to charge for your services. You spend a lot of time doing it. Well, 
Well, here's the thing, though. So you already think you're wrong when you're like, well, you know, I'm going to retire. So here's the thing. I'm, going to say, I'm thinking wrong. You are going to have, you're building a brand. Mm -hmm. You should be charging regardless because at the end of the day, it's your time. You got things, other things to do. Your time is valuable. And it, it, no, charge. Now, with that being said, you already know me. If you need a speaker, holler at your girl. We're here for it. Hey, yo, I'm glad you brought that up. Let me go ahead and tell my family, friends, closest relatives, anybody. I've been giving y'all folks a lot of free advice over the years. <laughs> <laughs> y'all start seeing these invoices in y'all email. Don't be down, Jack, when you start charging me. Hey, man, I'm just saying. Oh, <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, we can put on a conference just to have conversation. Real uh, talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they can do that. You know, be real. You know, hey, look, y'all, look here. I be telling, you know, here's the thing. My conversation with Jesus ain't normal. And what I mean by that is it's not, you know, Heavenly Father, thou shalt. Mm -mm. I look, look here, God. Because when people ask me to pray for them, I'm going to them as 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 me and Jesus already be conversating. You, you know, hey, and, and that's how I talk to people. Like, right. You know, I'm thinking right. too brightly here. I'm going to need you to work on this. Now, I'm laughing because you're talking about they got issues with getting out of bed to go to the gym. You keep that over there. We're not in the military anymore. Don't come over here with that energy because I ain't it. I am on my feet already all day. That was the only example I gave you, Taylor, but you get the point. <laughs> it was about, it's about the behavior change. It wasn't about. I know. The, anyway. Yeah, all I heard but, was gym and I was, I know you saw my <laughs> All I heard was gym. I was like, no, oh. because I kid you not, I was thinking about it the other day. And I was like, man, I should go. But then I'm like, I'm, I'm up at the school. And I'm on my feet, so walking ain't a problem. I'm walking all day long. Let's just right. say I'm, I'm past my miles on the daily. You, you get your steps in. Oh, I get all my steps in. Like yeah, it, when I say I've actually like, changed my workout since I've been out. I've changed to three days a week rather than five, and I've also changed to just straight hit. <laughs> so hit training. That's it. That's all I do. It's, it's, I can't. I told Dre y'all can keep that. Oh, y'all. Dre, Dre a different animal, man. Shout out to my boy Willie Hart, Dre. You know I you love know. Dre. We got to get, you know, we're going to do an episode with Dre on it. Real talk. We got to, man. We got to get. We got to have to do like the military family. Like, so what it is? Y'all y'all should come on this side. Well, we oh, really? Yeah, Dre, Dre, you know, Dre trying to make cheap, but my boy, he locked in. My I'm just telling y'all, if Willie Hart made cheap, I promise you, we about to act all the way up. Oh, we get rid of this. He making it. He, we about to act all the way up. I'm Dre making it. You know what? I love that fake talk. I'm gonna be in fact with you on that. So we got to make sure uh, Dre is that he watching this particular podcast. We like Dre, homie. You, you, we the, when the chief strike come down, we there. We yeah, there. My boy, he got. I think he got probably another year or so before he be eligible. But he's definitely on singing. But he'll be. He gonna get. It. Yeah, I'm definitely proud of him. So and I'm, you know, I'm proud of where we all going. And so, so here's the other question that is not written, but it just kind of came to my mind. So you know me, I be on the whim. When it comes to y'all. So um, one of the things that I just had a conversation about was as I, we just did one about women in leadership um, mm -hmm. being in male dominant areas, i.e. military. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about being a minority in these these areas. Um, mm -hmm. I, I tell people I, I we I, I for me myself definitely have a double edged sword because I am a woman. I am black. So when I step into certain areas, it's literally, oh, here come a woman and she black. She about to have an attitude and be a leader. Um, and then especially when I became a senior CEO, it was like, oh Jesus. I, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Lie, now that I'm out, I can say that's another reason why I got out because for 21 years, and I got my very first commander direct investigation. And people was like, if you ain't getting no CDI. Shoot, you always ain't doing that. You, you ain't doing that right when you get on CDI. Yeah, I open against you? Huh? You got a CDI open against you? I did. Oh, we ain't talk about that. I know we live, y'all, but yes. Oh, yeah, um, you, can, you, can, you can keep it kind of clean. You know what I'm saying? No, 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 no. It's fine because I'm really, uh, oh, I'm all the way. Okay. Um, I'm, I, I'm just, really, I feel like we sort of mentioned something, but we ain't getting into no details. I don't remember. Yeah, so no. I'm, and I'm, so here's the thing. And my investigation said because bullying and harassment. And so one of the things I had to learn oh, yeah, we did, we did, we talk about it. being yeah. military or being just black itself in your in your thought process, have first of all, we, we already know you as a, a male. 
So you as a black male already had a whole lot against you anyway. All right. Um, I, I do you think there's a difference when let's take these two locations, Oklahoma and DC. We mm. both those locations. Do you think there was a difference in treatment and everything else because of the locations? Oh, right. And also because of the time frame we were in too. Like you gotta remember we was in Oklahoma, it was the early two thousands, right? <laughs> This was the, like, let's just say, you know, you and I are not that old, but let's just say who's, who's part of the old Air Force before it became what it oh, is today. Also, what? I'm still look here. I stand ten toes. I, as, ten, as King Harris said, I stand on business. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah. It, even with knowing that, um, that things are just way different, it's evolved. For the, for some may say for the better, some may say for the worse, but that's neither here nor there. That's not part of my discussion or thought process. When we join, a lot of systems were in place, old systems, you know, groups, cliques, um, you know, a group of white guys that only hung around white guys, you know what I'm saying? A group of black, like, so segregation yeah. was, um, I ain't gonna say it was, it was still a unspoken thing. Oh, right? yeah. So, like, yeah. So, um, when I came in, especially being a young thunderhead from, from, from the streets of Georgia, I came in, um, from, you know, we from. I look at I, I was looking at you know those people funny anyway because <laughs> where we from people still say boy let's just be honest yeah um, yeah maybe not as much now but like in the two thousand early early nineties that stuff is still prevalent but anyway it's definitely been it was challenging back then to be a black man making it out progressing kind of quick mm -hmm. and I say to my I say to myself a lot back then I'm more talkative now but like. Back then, I didn't trust a lot of people, so I was kind of really in observation mode, kind of staring at people. They didn't like that aspect, right? So I wasn't part of the good guy crew. So now it's okay. The black guy clearly, clearly he's smart, right? Because he's coming up, he's coming up kind of fast. We don't know much about him. We don't talk to anyone, and so you 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 sort of become a target by default. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And so yes, it it it, it was tougher back then, but as things evolve. Sort of my last couple of five, six, seven years, um, I felt like, you know, with Me Too coming around, the, the unfortunate event that happened to George Floyd and a couple of the other uh, black people that lost their lives, the world took notice. And mm -hmm. even the military adopted some of the things that were changing in the world. And yeah. so it did get a little better over time. You know what I'm saying? But yes, there's definitely a, a, a clear struggle of being a, a black person, even in, like you said, even in a system where it's still structured, but there's still some hidden agendas with people, even in the military. And so, yeah, um, like you said, it was, it was, it was somewhat of a struggle. Um, and, but I, I'm, I'm a chameleon though. You know, I, I, I learned to adapt, adapt, adapt and adjust. To yeah. All that stuff. No, no, I will agree with that because when I think about it and I actually was, when I was writing my retirement speech, I remember I said, I remember being in units where I was the only black. Yeah. I was like, wait, oh, yeah. I'd never forget being stationed at a particular base. And I'm sitting here literally going, snap, I was the only black. I'm talking about, and being a person that's in the CSS, the receptions was black. I mean, it was white. My supervisor was white. The officer was white. The commander was white. First sergeant was white. My two co-workers was white. I was, right. I was the black person. And I laugh on something that you said, um, that, you know, always being creative, because one of the things is, is, you know, oh, my God, you you, you always been talking and everything else and it's not going to get you anywhere. And I remember hearing that from a particular supervisor. And I remember that particular supervisor very well because she didn't think I was worthy of absolutely anything. Like they literally made sure I deployed. Like mm. I never get that. I deployed. And for me, it worked out for, for me. God had his way into that. So. Um, I, I, but I laugh about it now because I'm looking at it going, where the hell got it? And so when I say Oklahoma, like you are correct, <laughs> the early 2000s. Yeah, bro. Um, there was some days. And I will say, one thing I give us credit for, we made the best of it, though. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. we acted up. I, I, I tell we people, up, now, we cut up. We cut up. So I, I tell Airmen now, Man, y'all didn't do what we did. Like, I don't know if you remember back in the day in the dorms, like everybody was together and 
barbecue and stuff like that. Like, football outside in the courtyard. And oh my God. Like, you, like you like you look forward to going home because you are yeah. about to be lit. And yeah. so you see now, you don't see none of that no more at, at all. There's no communication, no anything with the airmen we have nowadays. And so it's one of those things that I look back and go, yeah, we didn't really have it that bad. Like, oh, it wasn't that bad. It really wasn't even that bad. Like, I, I, my fondest memories are no kidding, living in the dorms, m- making friends to where I remember somebody made a post, and I'm going to say this before I go to the next question, but I remember somebody made a post talking about, man, forget like, you know, class reunions, but what about like your first base reunion? I was like, don't do it. Man, hey. What? If, hey, if that was a thing, like, bro, I'm telling you, we can gather up 20 to 30 people, go to a I, cabin retreat on the weekend, a tinker crew, and have mad fun. The crazy part about it is because when you think about my first base was Shepherd Air Force Base, and hands down, that was the time frame. I ain't even gonna lie for us. I was Shepherd, and when I made that pose, people was like, "Hey, let, don't don't play. What, what you what you wanna do?" Hey, yeah. And then a lot of people who was with me, I laughed because it, they tinker, all of that. Like it was a shift, so everybody knew everybody, right. and so I laugh about it. And I'm like, man, that was some some good days so nah, I, I definitely days, now, hey, let me ask you a question though right before we move on I'm okay. touching on the same yeah. subject because you was you was still in the streets in the Air Force I wasn't I was <laughs> you still had airmen and all this stuff I ain't had like for for the last seven years I was an individual right you you blessed uh yeah sort of so um uh, that's your question maybe this has something to do with it I think my last time having airmen was in 2013. that's oh. what I was yeah that's what I'm saying like I got I made it I made it out Oh, well, um, count your blessings. But um, I, I remember going to one of my airmen's dorm rooms one day, and I was telling them about like, she was like, "Yeah, it's nothing to do with the dorms. Everybody go in their room, and play video games." And, hey, I was like, "So y'all don't have a day room?" So what it sounds like is they took day rooms out and just gave all these kids TVs and internet. No, no, because we didn't have that back in our day. We only had no, the day right. room. We didn't. We didn't have that. But what the airmen do have, they have a thing called um quarters, and they have like a their own space. Um, but they do have a day room. Now, I have to speak for the Lackland here where I'm at. Okay. Uh, they do have, and each floor, what we didn't have, each floor has their own day room space. So, yeah, we didn't have it. We just had one. We had one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We had one. One in every building. That was it. Yep. Yeah, yeah. One. And everybody shared it. You had the laundry room right there. Yep, too. yep, yep. yep, yep. No, it's, I will say the military, I get it. They're definitely trying to change to reflect the culture, but at the same time, this is just me. I think we're, we're pushing things a little bit too. I might like, ah, we're beginning to lose that we're military because we walk right here allowing te- neck tattoos. That, again, it's just me. And now I'm cool with the ponytail because as a woman, I've cut my hair plenty of times behind that. Um, right. Being allowed to wear locks, I'm with that because it's, it's with time. But when we start talking about neck tattoos, mm, I that's just me. That's right, right, right. I mean, I hey, a little bit. We're getting too comfortable because as a, as you said, you ain't had them since 2013. They're a little different nowadays. They don't like a lot. Some of them, I won't say all, some of them come in. They don't like to be corrected. Um, And being here where it's basic training, one of the things that I noticed is, uh, because I was like, wait, I came in in 2002. Right. We doing this? They are literally, um, I was in the BX getting some food and there was three airmen really sweet airmen and they didn't have any tags on and i was like wait where, where's your name tag oh and they popped up a bit of tension and me and the cook was a little confused and like you guys tech school no we're basic training wait wait so what so they get basic liberty at like three weeks in i i didn't see bx until graduation yeah, we went in that jungle one time. Week zero, we get our uniforms, went to, went to a little small shop at place, and then we didn't see no. it again. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm at Lackland. That small shop at is across the street from the uniform place because I work I work at the MPS. It's across the street from the uniform place, that little shop at. Uniform yeah. place here, where we got our shots and everything else, is right yeah. here. And the shop is right here. I'm talking about the big BX. They were in the big BX in third week. I said, nah, uh-uh. Oh, no, no, no. So again, the culture has definitely changed like a lot. So 
Now I will say, now that you out and because I guarantee you, you're gonna start seeing stuff and be like, oh, uh, oh, well, what are you looking forward to now that you're retired? You still writing? Um, you just told me you finally went back to work. What is yeah. what is your what, what what are you looking forward to in this new stage of life? Um, honestly, I'm um. I'm breaking everything up into two year increments, right? You know, they, they always say set goals and you know, set small goals, and small goals that eventually lead to your your your, your big goal. But so I'm looking at uh in the next two years to expand um not not much not so much on the writing stuff, but just to expand the in unison for life enterprise brand into what I want to get into, like I said, the fitness stuff. So like I wanna open up the, the health my health and wellness brand, right? That's what I'm gonna call it. I don't wanna call it fitness, I wanna call it health and wellness because it's more than just working out. It's about your mental health, your, your spiritual, your, your physical. It's about all that. So I want to get into that more in the next two years. And so I'm really just looking forward to uh, expanding my, my my health and wellness brand over the next two years and see how I can continue to build on that. In addition to still doing what I can in the, in the humanitarian phase of going out, doing volunteer work, uh, linking up with, with uh, underprivileged kids. I, I want to do that stuff. That's where my heart is at right now, because I'm in a place where it's like, bro, look, I don't achieve enough where I can just sit back and help other people. Right? Like, I don't I don't do a lot of things for money. I'm never I'm never chasing a bag. Yeah, a bag cool to have. Get it. Like you said, anybody gonna do nothing for free, yeah, I want to make money, but I also realize that a lot of us, you included, I'm assuming, are in positions where we can help other people. Absolutely, yeah. Straight up, like it don't bother me to go volunteer and spend all my time helping these people because guess what i have the time now and so that's what i'm looking forward to really just getting out doing more for people because i've seen a lot of my time being selfish you know what i'm proud of you because you just said it because i'm over here hearing you and i'm like because i know the joshua bay i know jb yeah so and this is not to call you out because you know i love you um, I know JB. So to hear you say that, y'all don't understand for those that are watching, <laughs> those that are listening, this is yeah. absolute growth. Uh, by the way, if you are watching and listening, please do know that you can go on iamtratoria.poppy.com and also Apple, Google, um, Pan uh, Pandora, Amazon. You go all these other things to listen. But I am literally, I'm proud of you because Thank you said the key word, you know, I was selfish. And yes. so to hear you say, no, I really just want to help people. I'm going. I uh I also I also left out some tutorial. Um I told you about when I was in Columbia, I visited that African village. Mm -hmm. Me and my homeboy, my homeboy both sat both 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 in it. We both came back from that trip enlightened. We feel like, you know what, bro? Whatever happened in that village was what I needed in life going forward. I don't know what it was, but when I left that village, because I felt so at home, I felt, oh. I felt, I was, I was in that village, shirt off, leaving my bag over here, like nobody, not worried about anybody stealing from me. I felt at home and I never seen or visited them people in my life. And so- Let me, let me ask you this question. I don't mean to interrupt. Let me ask you this because I don't want to lose the trend out to something you just said, and especially before we end, but- when you say you felt like home, oh, did you get a sense of peace? And that's what it boils down to. It was calm. It was peace. And it's like, I've never been to Africa. I've never been around that many. It was just straight up African, you know, our people. Um, and like you said, no running water, living in B-Hut, ceiling open. They, they don't have a doctor. They have a, a neighborhood doctor with no degree. But he's still into the you know the holistic way of healing, and so right. this man, you know, I got a back issue. You know, they don't jack me up, and so this dude literally, I'm stuffing a jar that looked like some grease. <laughs> Bro, he rubbed it on my back. I'm good for the rest of that trip. You know what I'm saying? And so just being in that environment, said, "Bro, this is what life is about: finding peace, being happy, and helping people." Because guess what, Shay? We all we got, human yeah. beings. Human beings are all we have. Like, so work with each other. Stop all this. I'm doing better than you. You do it. I just love each other. Try to be nice to people. It ain't hard being a great human. It takes more work to be a, a horrible person. Because you have to think to put in the effort to try to be that person. 
Well, being a human being, being nice is just a natural thing. It should be. But look, two people, two people in a room, right? One of them got two fruit. This man ain't got one. Give him a fruit. It will be natural for you to get that man a fruit because you know he's he hungry, right? Right. That's the natural human thing that I want to get back to. Just doing what's right by people. And so when I left that place, that's what I felt in my heart. I want to do more for people and stop doing and focusing on myself so much. And so you that's where I'm at in life, man. Just, you, you over here just over here acting up. It, it took you to retire and go somewhere yeah. else. To get right, you know what? God has God has timing though. God has timing for everything, and I think one of the things that I appreciate about you is that you are working to find you, and that's huge because I mean you've had a lot happen over time that I've known mm -hmm. you, and so to see the peace that is on you is the dopest because when you're carrying so much, and one of the things is you know how I am about black men. I think. Black men are great, and I think that there's a lot that you all carry that a lot of people don't acknowledge. And so I, I give you that because you've carried a lot, so it's good to see you finally place it down and go, okay, yeah, what I need to do. Right. So I'm looking yeah. forward to seeing what comes from this new adventure of JP. Man, um, I, I feel so free, Jay. I swear to God, I feel... I just feel like there's a. I'm gonna see you a, a photo when we get off when we get offline. It's a pyramid, um, and, and you probably can share it and talk about it at some point. Or maybe we could talk about it in another interview. But there's a pyramid um, that I, that my homeboy sent me, both sent me, and it talks about the stages of life where people get at. And it's not to say that the lower stage of the pyramid is any less than the top stage. It just says that the mind develops, right? Mm -hmm. It's supposed to. People are supposed to develop. You don't supposed to stay stunned at a, a level. You're supposed to continue or want to grow. So this, this 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 pyramid talks about the, the highest level of uh growth for the for the human brain and, and the human body. And once you once I send it to you and you look at it, that's where I'm at in life. And like I said, that's a that's a that's a uh that's a cliffhanger for the next time we chat, we can talk about that. I'm, I'm giving you I'm giving us a part two. You, what you know what? Yeah, we we I'm a, we gonna have a part two on this season five with JB because I want to talk Already. about Already. Cause uh, that is dope. So we definitely gotta do that. All right. Already. So, oh Jesus, I can't be playing with him. All right, don't go, don't you go nowhere. But to everybody, don't 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 go nowhere. All right, to everybody else that is on. I thank you guys for chatting in with us. We will be finishing up this conversation. I thank you guys because we didn't get all the questions we needed to today. But that's okay. But we are gonna come back and we go. We gonna talk about this, y'all. We are gonna get it in. Uh, as you guys already know, um, make sure you check us out on YouTube. Uh, for those that want to watch and for those who want to listen, again, you got Amazon, you got Google. He just messed my whole head up with that because that got me over here thinking. Uh, he, y'all, he laughing behind closed doors too, y'all. I'm about to fight him. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to leave with our usual saying. Uh, walk in love, live physically, and have a whole lot of faith. Do know we will be back next week uh, as we're entering into February. Y'all, we about to hit it in. As a matter of fact, I did not mention... Um, you can check him out because he is in. If you have not gotten your magazine, get your magazine because JB is in the magazine as part of our black men leaders. So definitely check him out. All right. I will be checking you guys out again next week. Again, love you to the moon and back. I pray all the blessings. All right. Talk to you later. Mm -hmm.